Okay, so today we're going to work on producing this incredible Umber Hulk uh, proxy called the Hive Colossus. This is from the amazing Artisans Guild Patreon. They have incredible models. You should definitely check them out. I'm going to put a link in the video so you can see their Patreon. Uh, and what we're going to work on today is primarily supporting the head. And it's going to get, start to get into some of the advanced uh, support placement techniques and just how you should do it. Also, again, a little bit about orientation, which will be helpful on a model like this. And then the video after this will be about supporting the actual body itself. And also, I'm going to do a separate video on a quick one on how to hollow uh, a multi-part large model like this, which hopefully will be helpful to you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Don't hate me because I'm a lawyer. Uh, I can't help it. And enjoy the video, guys. Okay, so we have the Umber Hulk sitting on the plate already. Okay. And I'm going to be working on the head today only. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to perfectly support this head. Okay, so let me select it. Let me move. In fact, the body, you see it's uh, it's, it's showing red so it wouldn't even print. So we'll, we'll, we'll work on that later. Let me just actually get it out of the way for now. So get back to this head. So the head dropped in in this orientation. And let's look one more time at why auto supports really suck ass. Okay. Uh, the Z lift height from my old video, I'd raise it to eight. So let me drop it back down to five, which is what I normally set it at. Okay. And support density is at 75% which is very dense, a lot of supports. Let's go to heavy supports and go from the platform. And we see, just like I showed in my last video, that tooth is going to fail for some reason. So, But the point is not to show you how bad auto supports are, so let's get those off. And now let's go to manual support placement because this is how you support models properly. So I go underneath. I'm going to be looking for the islands as I described in my last video. So you see at the tip, there's obviously islands. Those are the lowest points of the model. Here's another low point. And those teeth are low points, obviously. Let me shift my view a little bit. So we're going to support those. And those are all heavy supports because these absolute lowest points are going to be supporting the whole model, basically. So I want to make sure that these are really, really solid. That way I ensure this model will not fail. 100% will not fail. Then once I have it anchored, I'm going to go to my light supports and and just support the whole thing, even though technically there's no islands and some people tell you, well, you might not need supports. Look, if you do this, you guarantee there's no fail. Okay. And if you look at my settings for my lights, I have them at contact diameter 0.12, which is tiny. And the contact depth also at 0.12, which is super, super tiny. Okay. Because I want minimal damage to my model. So that 0.12 uh, has to do with the diameter of the contact point. The contact depth, that point went to is how deep into the model that contact goes. So when I go to break it off, it, it's going to leave an infinitesimal mark that you won't see. Okay? We get to the lower diameter. That's the lower diameter of that extension. And then the connection length is how long that, the length of this that I'm highlighting right now. Okay? And I always go with cone shape. So the upper diameter and the lower diameter I'm showing you now, not real, real important. You know, I just keep them at a, at a moderate number. Uh, and then I'm going to click over to the middle section. The middle is this ball, okay, basically. So that ball, it's cylinder. It's the diameter of the ball is 0.8, okay? Now the bottom shows where it anchors to the bottom of the build plate down there, okay? It shows that's going to touch at 10 millimeters wide. But we don't really care about the bottom so much either because what's going to affect our model is the top. So let's go back to it, and we're looking at these light supports so now, with a, with a heavy support anchoring and then a bunch of light supports, which are going to rip off and leave no marks, this thing is going to print up really nicely. So if I was doing it this way in this orientation, which actually I wouldn't, but let me just show you what I would do in case you run into a situation like this. I'm going to line this thing. These light supports with this minimum contact depth and minimum diameter are really not even going to leave a mark. You won't even know they were there. So I'm going to load it up just to make sure my model does not fail. Okay, and I can, anywhere there's red, I can reasonably add them, okay. and I'm, I'm going to make sure, one of the things you want to make sure, and which we're going to talk about a lot more, is as I drop these supports, there are times when the support itself 
we'll go close to another part of the model. And due to imperfections and impreciseness in the printing process and a little bit of exposure leakage from light hitting uh, some resin that's not supposed to actually cure, sometimes the supports end up being a tiny little bit wider they should be, uh, and the model could be a tiny little bit wider. So we'll talk about it in a minute, but let me show you. See, now everything's supported. These teeth are supported. But looking at this, these tips of the mandibles and the teeth, these points here, when I support it like that, I might lose those tips a little bit when I take those supports off. So let's not do this because those, those points are some of the highlights of the model to me, the highlights of the head. I want those points to come out perfectly. So I want to change the orientation so that those points are not necessary to be supported anymore. That way they're going to print out totally perfect. So what I'm going to do is, and this model is actually really almost tailor-made for what I'm going to show you because the teeth and the mandibles uh, pointing almost the same direction. This part of circling Let's use this because this area you're not going to see. It's going to be sunk into the other part of the model. So that means I can support the hell out of this and, and no one's going to see it at all. It's like a covert operation. So I don't even have to be careful. So let me rotate this so that the mandibles and teeth are basically pointing up. Pointing up, they now need zero supports, right? <laughs> so since they need zero supports, they're going to come out just absolutely dead perfect. The other benefit is the, the part that I don't care about is now actually facing down. So now I can put my supports where they're going to totally anchor the model. You won't be able to see any damage they cause. So I can go nuts. I can just load this thing up with heavy supports right now because who cares? You're never going to see it. I don't care if this little square peg thing gets you know ripped in half when I take the supports off. It's not going to affect my model at all. You will never see it except in one of my videos. So it's a great thing. So this model really lends itself to, to this kind of support technique. So I'm just going to drop some heavy supports, obviously at the, at the very first point of contact, but then just almost anywhere else. It doesn't even matter. Just throw them down. Who cares? Anchor my model. I'm going to over support it because what's the difference? It, the last thing you want on any model is failure. So better to over support than to have a failure. Now looking, we see some areas just eyeballing or hanging down. Now I mouse over, you see the island. So I do have to support this, but the other good news is this part is not only gonna be on the underside of the model, but also facing the back of the model. So I don't think you're ever gonna see this little part that I have to support. And it is gonna support, I'm mousing up. It's only gonna support a little bit of material, so I don't need a heavy support here. It's not supporting the whole mandible. It's only supporting a tiny little piece. So I'll go medium just to be super duper safe. I could probably get away with light. But since you're not going to see this area, I'm not so worried about damage anyway. So I'll do a medium. Do a medium over here. Now I can see there's another area hanging down on the sides. I can just eyeball that, but let me go and mouse over it. Again, this is supporting not that much material, but to be safe, let's stick with the medium support because you definitely won't be seeing this area either. Now, let's talk a little bit more advanced here. This distance between the base of this support, the base portion of it, and the model, it's actually, that might look big because I'm zoomed in, but that is super duper tiny. That could actually bond. And to me, one of the worst things that can happen when you're printing a model is any support structure bonds to any part of the model because that means when you remove that support, you actually have to physically take your clippers and clip that off, and it will absolutely damage the model. So now I go to edit support. This is a button I was afraid to use when I first got my printer. So you can edit the top as I clicked here. Changes the contact point. You can click, left click, drag it around, and make it touch any part of the model you want. Next thing you can click is the ball, the middle part. If you move that, you can only move it up or down. When you move it up, it actually thickens your contact. You move it down, you see it thins the material going. So it actually thins your contact point a little bit. Okay. So I just use that. It also changes... If you're not vertical like this, it would also change the angle of the support. Plus, I use that ball sometimes to raise the support over another part of a model so that when I rearrange the top, no part will be intersecting the model. But that'll be in another video where I show some more advanced stuff. So here, I'm going to drop these further down. Okay. And this one is still too close to the model. So now the most significant thing you can do with the edit support tool is you click the bottom part, highlights the whole thing, then you can actually drag the base around. This is amazing because this allows you to change the angle, move the whole support so that's not too close to the model. And this is one of the most important things I do when I'm hand placing my supports. You really want to make sure nothing ever, ever, ever bonds to your model. It will ruin the look. So this is the one I really want to change. 
So I'm going to click the base of this one. Okay, I zoomed out to show you the, how tiny the space really is. And I'm just going to move it a little bit. Right now, I've moved it. No part of that support is too close to the model now. It will not bond to that model. The other thing to notice, when you move the bottom, it does change the angle of your support connection. So I always go back and readjust the top part of the support to make sure it's touching exactly where I want it to. And now, believe it or not, just those few supports, this model is now totally supported. It is going to print out absolutely perfectly. Oh, I'm sorry. Ahead of myself. I forgot. I turned the model around and get all the islands over here. And then it will be supported perfectly, as I was saying. So there's a little island there that I need to worry about. A tiny little one right here. All right, you saw it. So since the bottom part of this neck thing piece, I don't know what to call it, is going to be mostly out of sight, I'm going to support that with big supports. Because, again, if there's damage, who cares? So I'm going back to my heavies. And every there's an island there, even though it's going to be a little overkill to do heavies all there, I'm just going to do it, boom, because who cares? I don't want my model to fail. I don't want to reprint this. I want it to look perfect the first time. Now here, you might or might not see that, so I'm going to go with the light because it's only supporting a tiny little bit of material, literally a few pixels. So I don't need much, but I don't want that to fail. Look, if you don't put a support there, the model's still going to print out fine, but there could be hardened resin floating in your vat afterwards, and none of us clean our vat after every print, I'm pretty sure. You, don't, you want to make sure there's no resin floating around. So you want to support everything. Every island needs to be supported, even if it won't really affect the look of the model. Let me clone this, okay? I clone. I want to show you something. When you... You can move the model around, but if you rotate, left or right is fine. But if you rotate vertically or uh, on the other axis that effectively is, is vertical as well, it will remove the supports. So when you click those and try to move it, it will say, this operation will remove the supports. Do you want to proceed? So just know that you can, you can move the model, drag it around. You can change the yaw, but if you go pitch or roll... The supports are coming off. If you scale, right? If you scale, supports are coming off, okay? So you have to know that if you change the scale and if you mirror, supports are also coming off, which I don't like. It should, since you're mirroring, you're not changing anything at all, actually, supports should stay, but they don't. So if you go to mirror, supports will come off. You have to redo them. So keep that in mind when you're placing supports. Um, and now eyeballing, I see, hey, you know what? That point looks like it's kind of almost hanging down. Let's double check it. Oh, yeah, that's the one I had actually seen before, and I hadn't placed my support, so let's go back and get that one. So seeing, even just looking with your eye, you, you, you should be able to catch stuff like that, like I just did. Um, that one looks okay. You could support it. I could put a light support there. You'd probably never know, but also it doesn't need it. It's, it should print fine. So right now, this model, even though there's some areas that look red, those are all going to print fine. Okay, so I, I put one here just to show you, and now I'm getting rid of it. This head is going to print perfectly right now. And when it's printed out and you insert it into the model, you will say, wow, that's 3D printing because there's no marks, no line, no nothing on it anywhere. It just looks perfect. Let's go back to the big boy now. Drag him back onto the plate. Okay, so the head is done. So let's just kind of get this guy ready for the next video because the next video is going to be a lot more complex. We're going to talk about how to support this big guy. I'm also going to do a video on how to hollow him out and put drain holes so you never see them, but you get to drain your model and, and uh, save some resin and also don't have a bunch of resin sloshing around in your model, which can eventually over time lead to the model cracking or breaking, which you really don't want, of course. Uh, even several years from now, you don't want that to happen. So now our model's position. We're basically ready to go for the next video. Hope this one was helpful. Please like, please subscribe, please share if that's possible. Um, anyway, and watch my other videos. Some more advanced techniques are coming. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I helped you even in some small way. And thank you very much for watching.